Hello and good evening. This is Mark Hearn and welcome to Waterford News Now. This is a new show here in Waterford on Public Access TV 10. This show will cover the township board meetings from a citizen's point of view and information about upcoming events in Waterford. I have been a resident of Waterford and operated a business in Waterford for over 20 years. This show will adopt a quote from one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, as its motto. The two enemies of the people are criminals and government. So let us tie the second down with the chains of the Constitution so the second will not become the legalized version of the first. We will start this show today by discussing the board meeting of October 24th, 2016. The employee of the quarter is John Parker, or as he's commonly known, Farmer John Parker, who works at Hess Hathaway Park off Williams Lake Road, south of M59. One of the jewels of Waterford, actually. Congratulations to John for all of his hard work. Next, a resolution to secure the townships of Oakland County was presented. This was in reference to the Syrian refugees that are being allowed by the federal government to migrate into our country. Much controversy surrounds this decision, and that was very evident at the meeting. Gary Wall presented the issue very nicely to start the discussion by telling the very large crowd that his family came from immigrants. Most everyone has. He continued to say this was not a prejudicial decision or an attack on human beings and that we are focusing solely on the township level only and solely for security reasons. He said this was actually recommended by the OCATS, which stands for Oakland County Association of Township Supervisors. Karen Joliet gave a statistic that Michigan was the top place as far as numbers for placement of these Syrian refugees. I would say around 40 people came to the podium to speak for well over an hour of discussion. Both sides were presented about equally. Those that wanted to adopt the resolution until a safer vetting process could be guaranteed to those who wanted to welcome the refugees to our community because that was the kinder thing to do, to those who were totally embarrassed to be associated with Waterford because of this resolution. One business owner passionately told the people in the crowd that he helps many people across the county and was going to be embarrassed to have his business associated with this community and this resolution if it was adopted. At least half were very positive about the resolution, at least until the refugees can be verified and identified. Many said we should follow the laws already on the books as it concerns the way refugees are allowed and welcomed into our country. Some are worried about the potential for extreme beliefs and terrorism in our own community. One person said the citizens are losing control of the government. A local pastor got up and said the resolution was fear-based and that he has put together a forum to successfully help these people settle into our community. Another speaker got up and said it was not fear, but reacting to facts that are seen in other parts of the world like Germany. Karen Joliet again spoke and said she had contacted Lighthouse in Pontiac and they had seen a couple of these refugees and they had absolutely no ID of any kind. There were many that spoke about compassion toward these people. It seemed all the speakers had compassion, but some were more worried about health issues of the refugees, diseases they would bring into our community, terror activity, and any financial burdens to our already financially stretched community. Apparently Pontiac has denied these refugees already. Dr. Hadi Daye 
an orthodontist in Rochester, and a former Syrian refugee himself, spoke about an organization he works with called Syrian American Rescue Network. A thousand have been resettled in Michigan already, he said, and two to three families are currently settled in Waterford, Michigan. They are a very productive community, he indicated. Ninety percent have been put into work programs. He asked for kindness and to welcome these people as building blocks of our future community. A person from Samaritus, which is a Lutheran organization, got up to talk and said there are 4.7 million Syrian refugees and 2.5 million of those are children. Gary Wall interjected and said when Homeland Security calls and says they have problems vetting these people, then he better listen and protect his community. Anthony Bartolotta, Donna Kelly, and Karen Joliet all spoke as well, assuring the crowd this was just to protect our community and could be changed as soon as policies and protocols were in place to ensure our safety. Most agree this is a safety issue. The resolution did pass unanimously at the final vote. The next item on the agenda was called Developmental Services Personnel Matter. This item was never fully discussed, except extremely briefly by Lou Ferrino, the HR person for the township. He gave absolutely no details and said everything was approved by the Teamsters and it does not touch or affect any other Teamster employee at the township. We wonder if that's true. This issue started when Lou Ferrino was asked by Kirk Simpson for more vacation time. Kirk is the head of our zoning department. He had retired from the Waterford Police Department with a full retirement. Trust me, it is a very good situation that leave our officers with, with our retirement. And we should. Then he was hired to do zoning and after two years wanted to have the same vacation time that he had when he retired from the Waterford Police Department. Lou did not grant it. Then Kirk Simpson found a way to address the board in a workshop session on September 26, 2016. These are never attended but are open to the public. I was there for this workshop. Kirk presented that his entire department heads were on board with this proposal, and Lou Ferrino was, and the Teamsters were. He wanted the same amount of vacation that he had when he retired from the police department just a few years ago. At the workshop, the township attorney said that the HR, human resource attorney, should be contacted and have this okayed prior to any decision. There is no indication that this was ever done and no township board member has told me this was done. I actually invited Gary Wall, Kirk Simpson, and Chief Scott Underwood to appear on this show tonight and they never responded to me. Not one of them. I actually personally delivered a letter to all board members at 4 p.m. at their work session before the board meeting on October 24th, telling them concerns I had over this issue and concerns other employees at the township had over this issue. Let me read you a small portion of that letter. We learned last week and have it verified by at least four people. One I could reveal to you, additional sources will remain anonymous that Kirk is moonlighting a county in the Parks Division of the Sheriff's Department. How can he devote his time and energy to both and be in charge of the one, that being the Waterford zoning? Then at the workshop we were supposed to check with the HR lawyer to see if this was going to set a precedent. I see no letter stating that it will not in the meeting agenda. I do see a very legal document that calls it a unique circumstance. Really? 
So Annette, who also works with Kirk and is also a retired police officer, is going to see Kirk's as unique and hers as not. We should see the letter from the HR attorney so that future boards have something to hang their hats on and so the HR attorneys can be held accountable for what he said. I saw you make an exception for the rehire at the Department of Public Works last month. Do you think Kirk's request just happened to show up after that decision by chance? I have been contacted today by people at Town Hall concerning this issue. They quoted, just making sure that I was aware. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not going over well. To sneak this through is dishonest and harmful to the rest of the Teamster employees at Town Hall. Kirk has no unique situation and has agreed to everything he has been offered so far, knowing full well what it all entailed. This should not be accepted. I will not speak at the meeting tonight except to ask if this letter will be put in the minutes. I have already told Gary and Shelley this, but for some reason, even though two changes happened after my request to be taken off the agenda, I was left on the agenda. Hmm. The resolution passed unanimously, and I know some of them voted to help others get the extra benefit within the township employees. The final item was never to happen, and it concerns me and my son, actually. We will spend an entire show on this issue in the very near future. But it is embarrassing to see good people act badly. Many lies were expressed, and things were said that I will show with documentation are just outright lies. These people run our government and our police force. In the letter I just read to you that was given to all board members two hours prior to the actual board meeting and was referenced numerous times by Gary Wall clearly indicated I would not be at the board meeting due to help I needed to provide to my clients and their sick pets. They had this mocking trial scheduled and did not want to deviate from their incendiary plan. We will present the shocking truth on a future program for all to see. Let's move on to the election. Be very careful who you vote for. Will they represent you and carry out your desires and spend your tax dollars as they should? I sent two emails to all the candidates and nobody wanted to speak to Waterford. Now, honestly, it was very short notice. We put this show together in just a very few days. So I can't blame them totally. I did hear from Karen Joliet. She was out of town. Obviously, that won't work if you're trying to interview somebody when they're not home. Robin McGregor and Rita Holloway Ir Irwin for clerk. They all contacted me but were unable because they were busy getting door to door and could not afford the time to come on our new show. We wish them all well on Tuesday, November 8th. Everyone needs to vote. Not only for the president, but locally voting for your local representatives and your local township officials is extremely important. It's extremely important. Gary Wall is the only candidate that is unopposed in the township, but I have heard that Diggy the dog is a write-in for supervisor. Good luck, Gary. Time will tell. Signs are being stolen. Apparently, there is a white pickup truck that is stealing signs. If anyone knows who this is, please leave a message on our Facebook page. That's the worst thing you can do during an election. Please don't steal signs. The budget meetings were this past week. I attended both days, and I was watching the board go over the new budget, which was proposed by Gary Wall. It, it is not a balanced budget, and in fact is using money 
from funds the township has set up for rainy days. We will discuss this in more depth on a future show. The expenses for the township attorney, excuse me, the expenses for the township attorney are huge. I personally asked Gary while at the meeting if that was going to be discussed at the budget hearings and was told no. We'll try to dig deeper on that subject and, and get some information for you. Well, finally, we'd like to end the show with uh, some real happy notes about things that are going to be coming up, some of the news highlights in the community. Um, the first one is going to be the tree lighting, and that's going to be on Tuesday, November 29th, in front of Township Hall. Come with your entire family to welcome the season of Christmas. Uh, the Waterford Insider is a wonderful resource for upcoming events in Waterford. Let me touch on a few of these events. Uh, November is a no-shave month, so if you see your firefighter or your police officer, um, they haven't shaved, well, there's a reason. They're in a competition against each other. So uh, it's a no-shave November for our, uh, our um, firefighters and police. Uh, firemen are heroes throughout our world. Come join the Hometown Hero Party. And you can meet all the local firefighters. That's on Wednesday, November 9th from 6 until 7.30 p.m. Ages 3 to 9, apparently. And it's the fire department headquarters on Crescent Lake Road. Uh, the Veterans Day Luncheon is our next featured event. And that's sponsored by Same Address. It's on Thursday, November 10th at 12 noon. All veterans receive a complimentary lunch. Members, $8. Non-members, $10. There will be a flag ceremony by the Honor Guard from the VFW Post 1008 of Waterford. Special music by Waterford Kettering students. And a tribute to prisoners of war and fallen comrades by Post Commander of the American Legion, Post Three seven seven. Please make your reservations by November 4th, 248-682-9450. And that's at the Waterford Senior Center on Pontiac Lake Road. Our next event is the Holiday Shopping Extravaganza. Waterford Senior Center's Holiday Bazaar and Craft Show in Waterford Garden Club's Annual Greens Market. And this is Thursday and Friday, December 1st and December 2nd, both days from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. One-stop shop, everyone welcome, free admission, multiple specially selected vendors, lunch and snacks available, antique appraisals, fun raffles. It's at the Waterford Senior Center. That's 3621 Pontiac Lake Road, Waterford, Michigan, 248. 682-9450. Our next event is the Dashing Through December, a holiday shopping bonanza. Calling all artists, crafters, and home businesses, the Waterford Coalition for Youth invites you to be a featured vendor. Saturday, December 3rd, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is at Donaldson Hills Elementary School. Cost is $50 per table, or two tables for $90. Includes one 8-foot table, two chairs, and an 8 by 10 space. Must be handmade or private home business. Questions? Contact the Coalition at 248-618-7424. Hope you'll join us. The final thing we want to discuss with you is the Post Impression Street Art Expo Exhibition at the Kroger Plaza. This will close at the end of November. If you haven't stopped by to check out the artwork, be sure to do so before November 30th. Dozens of handcrafted and decorated posts by Waterford residents, businesses, and the community at large are on display. You don't want to miss this unique and creative exhibit. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any suggestions, any comments, anything you'd like us to talk about, 
I would appreciate it if you would message us at Facebook. We'll have the addresses for that and other important information that you need up on the screen after the show concludes. Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful evening.